With that, let's get up to Charlotte, North Carolina, as we bring in our broadcast team of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Thank you very much, Larry. We are here on a beautiful afternoon for football. Today, we've got a good NFC matchup on tap between the New York Giants and the Carolina Panthers. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. First and ten, Newton. Oh, he's able to outmuscle him here as he pulls it in. And they got 29 yards there. And the Panthers are going to get a first down. Defense showing blitz. They'll run. This is Jonathan Stewart. And he'll get this down only to about the 46. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Here's the lineup and a big boy in the backfield, Tolbert. It's real easy to look at him and immediately picture a bowling ball scattering pins. That's exactly what Mike Tolbert does. It's brought in right side by Ginn. A nice pickup there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. Now Newton on first down. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. If you're running out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. Better, you got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up and making sure it was a catch. Just a yard on the pick up there, and it'll leave them with a third and three. And we look now at the defense for the Giants. Janoris Jenkins combines excellent coverage ability with supreme confidence in himself. He thinks that no one is going to catch a pass in his area. Calls himself Clamp City. Five yards is the pick up there as that extends this drive. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. On first down, Newton steps away to his left. Looking for Funches, but it's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Well, they thought they were going to break the tie. The defense had other plans. They were already in field goal range. But boom, an interception. I don't know if this was a case of being a little bit too greedy with the opportunity to put points on the board, but give credit to the guys on the defensive side. Hung in there, battled, and made a key play. And he's going to be brought down. Back at his own six-yard line. Well, so much for setting the tone of the drive offensively. Giving up a big sack that loses that kind of yardage, not a great start. Here's the former seventh-round pick, Rashad Jennings. And they only get a yard back there. They'll be left with a third down and long. They go play action for Jennings. Now Manning backing up. He's going to loft one deep over the middle. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. Manning to Beckham. A big play there. 57 yards. I know they had good coverage downfield, but you have to wonder, on third and long like that, how does that happen that they can get that far downfield and complete a pass? you got to guard the sticks, understand where you are, so it's almost like someone fell asleep in the switch. And now that the play's been completed, they've got to dust themselves off on defense, pick it up, and figure out how to not let that happen again. As a defender, you're eager to be involved in every play. So when the action goes away from you, a lot of times you run after the ball. But in this case, what a terrific job of the defender staying home and taking care of his responsibilities. Call it no gain there. And now they're looking at a third and 13. And the starting defense here for the Panthers. Charles Johnson off the edge. A long day for any offensive tackle. Manning surveying the field. He's got a good game. A big 30-yard play on third. 
We just saw him hit a big play there on a deep post. And most of the time, the post isn't available because you usually have defenders in the middle of the field. But if you throw enough curls and crossing routes and underneath routes, <laughs> I know from experience, they get tired of watching those balls get caught. It's like a creep up a little bit, and that's when you can hit them big over the top. And he can't corral it. Maybe a big missed opportunity there defensively in the end zone. And now third down. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. They'll try to run now with Jennings. And he is in. Touchdown. And the Giants are going to take a first quarter lead. Able to punch it in on third down makes it easier for those guys on the sideline. They didn't have a fourth down decision to make. Yeah, could you feel the exhale? Because they were already thinking ahead as all the good coaching staffs do. Anticipating what we have to make the call. They already had it lined up. Never even got to it. Here's Brown out to kick this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he's able to get it across the 20, but not by much, as he's marked down at the 21-yard line. The Panthers' offense here, they get ready to head back on the field. And in enemy territory last time through the interception, we'll see what they do on this drive. I can't wait to see how it alters what they decide to do in play calling. Do they continue to throw the ball? Do they want to lean more on the running game? It'll be an interesting sequence of plays that they've got coming up. Does it often affect the play calling with the interception? How, how much does that change what you do? I think it does depending on why the interception was thrown. Sometimes it's just a matter of the defense made a great play, so you continue to come back. But if it's on you, if the offense just doesn't have the confidence, if they're a little bit shaky, maybe try to take the pressure off and run the ball a little bit. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves his stays. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. Rolling to his right. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he is down deep into giant territory. A big play there for Carolina. 46 yards. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Now Stewart on first down. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. It's a nice pickup of 12 yards, and it gives them a first and goal. And that run was what a lot of people call an explosive run. Gave them good yardage, solid yardage. They feel good about the whole thing, and they did it behind a two tight end set. It's always interesting to watch what offenses want to do with the two tight ends. Sometimes they line them up together for a power set. Sometimes they put one on each side of the line of scrimmage to balance things out. No matter what, though, when you see two tight ends on the field, your first thought is to think run. In this case, the offense was able to run successfully. They were looking to get it to Kelvin Benjamin there, and it's third down. And here comes play number six on this drive. Now forced out to his left. And that will be incomplete as well. He was trying to get it that time to Ted Ginn. And now it's fourth down. And this one is no good. He missed it. And this score will stay right where it is. And that one, my goodness, that was almost too easy. Yeah, and you're not going to have too many attempts shorter than that one. I don't think anyone got a finger on it. That's about as bad a miss as you can have. Jennings, and he goes nowhere. He'll lose yardage back at the 17. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. The defense won that play so fast that I think if the running back even had time to notice if anyone was there, it was trying to get it to Beckham, and it's intercepted. It's the Pro Bowler, Luke Kinkley, that picks it. And they will finally get to him, but a great return has set him up first and goal at the five. Carolina getting set to take the field. And they had compiled a pretty long drive last time. Unfortunately, though, it ended with no points after the missed field goal. And that can hurt the psyche of a team because as they drove downfield, you know you're never supposed to count points in your mind until they go up on the board. Well, let's face it, we've been there, we've seen teams before. They were counting on those points. They didn't get them. 
Can they come back now, start over again, and grind it out? On second down, they run with Stewart. And he takes it into the end zone for a Panthers touchdown. Jonathan Stewart taking it in from four yards out. And the Panthers are now an extra point away from tying up this game. So a tie ball game here as the kicks away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll probably wish he reconsidered here. It'll cost him 10 yards now with a new rule as he's down at the 15-yard line. And now out come the Giants. And following the interception, we'll see what they can put together on this drop. I hear my old college coach right now. He always used to tell us before every game, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. What they're hoping is that that last mistake is their only one of the game. Coaches, that's all they talk about, turnovers, right? <laughs> Minimizing those and maximizing opportunities. They'll run it now out of the gun. And down he'll go at the 25. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. Not too many more ideal situations in second and two in order to try and pick up a first down. They ran it and picked it up. Out on the right, this is Cruz. It'll be a gain of four, and it's a second down. When you decide to run a hitch route, it really helps to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. Manning the throw on second down. And he fires one incomplete. He was trying to get it to Rashad Jennings. Third down here. And the offense looking to pick up the first down after the second down incompletion. And on the ground they go with a running back. Now he will have a first down here at about the 40. Give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. Brief break in the action here. On third down, and... I remember playing, and all the time on the sidelines, you hear a coach calling for the punt team to get ready on third down because you can't call for it on fourth down. It's too late getting on the field. So a lot of times you're lining up, and the offense can see you lining up. Occasionally it serves as motivation for them. I'm not letting these guys back out here. I want to keep the ball on offense, and that's exactly what they did. And they're going to speed things up here. Now Manning. Trying to get it to Beckham, and it's intercepted. It's the safety, Kirk Coleman. And he'll be stopped shy of the 15 at the 14-yard line on the return. But I believe the Giants got this back, and they will hold on to the possession. The Giants' defense now ready as they trot back out onto the field. Here's Newton looking for Benjamin, but it's intercepted. Picked off by Dominique Rogers Cromarty. And they'll set up shop in enemy territory at the 45-yard line. And here comes the Giants offense back out onto the field. Looked like they had something going last drive. Then the interception happened. Will they recover? The memory they need to keep with them is that they did have something going. They were moving the ball on offense, had a nice sequence going. Don't worry about the other part. You can't get that back. Let's go back to what you were doing well before. I thought you were going to say they need to have no memory, but remember the good part, forget the bad. I like that even better. <laughs> He's going to fire one deep over the middle. And he can't hang on. That's definitely going to be one he wishes he had back. Incomplete in the end zone. I'm not quite sure how he wasn't able to hold on to that one in the end zone. A great opportunity lost, but a lot of relief for the defensive guys. When they get into film next week, they're going to want to know what happened. Where was the breakdown that almost allowed a touchdown? Really good, smart play by the defense, understanding third and short, guarding the first down sticks, and being able to make a play on the football and bat it down. So the kick from here on a field goal would have been right at 53 yards, but instead, offense out there. They're going for it. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. Call it a gain of three. And they're able to pick up the conversion here on fourth down. 
They go play action here on first down. It gets this one to Dwayne Harris. Take it second down. So there on that play, offensively, they ran the crossing route. Defense was in zone coverage. So as a former DB, how tough is it to defend that? Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. On first down, Manning to Shepard, complete over the middle. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. It's a four-yard pickup, and it'll be second down. And now they're in the hurry up. On second down, here's Manning. Finding his safety valve here, that's complete. And eventually brought down, but it's near the five at the six. Now hold everything here, we're gonna get a timeout by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. From the gun, it's Manning. And he's got it, touchdown Giants. Victor Cruz in the final seconds of the first half. And the Giants are in for six. That's one of the better examples of clock management I've seen. Whittled it all the way down just about and still put the ball in the end zone. And just a methodical drive and something really to take into the lockers here. Brown now to kick it away after the touchdown. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And the decision to bring it out is going to cost him about seven. Two more quarters to go. We'll have plenty more to see after the break. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. That'll be taken in the end zone. What a spin. And he'll probably wish he reconsidered here. It'll cost him 10 yards now with a new rule as he's down at the 15-yard line. The Giants offense now gets ready to head back onto the field. They have the lead now. They'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking into my favorite subjects, tendency breakers or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half and they've had ability to see what you've done, they're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust. And got his man complete. And give him a gain of 37. Well, that's the kickstarter right there. Eli Manning finding his guy, Odell Beckham Jr. Yeah, it's a deadly combination, isn't it? It really is, but what really makes it work is just how unflappable Eli is with his demeanor, able to maintain his calm and his poise, because we know OBJ, he can run pretty hot and get excited out there. Sometimes just one-handed grabs for him. It doesn't matter what it is. Just throw it up there. He'll go get it. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. The pro bowler Odell Beckham, the intended receiver, and it's third down. Different pass rushes are designed for different things. Sometimes you want to keep the quarterback in the pocket. Sometimes you want him to flush. I don't know exactly how this one was designed, but they made sure they moved him to his right. He got out of the pocket. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked off by Trey Boston. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. The Panthers offense now, they head back on the field for their first possession of the second half. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense mm, at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack him here. From his goal line here, Newton. And the tight end, Olsen, right side. He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. Obviously, this has not been a banner game throwing the football. So what you got to do? You got to kind of down focus, don't you think? Find the tight end. Take some easier complete. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Olivier Vernon in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. Here's Newton now on second down. It's brought in right side by Ginn. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. It'll be a pickup of 13 on the play. And it'll be third down. And quickly, they get to the line. Newton on third down. Fighting him off. 
just ran right through the trash. And that is incomplete. Greg Olson was the intended target, and that brings up fourth down. And whistle blown. A timeout here is taken, and it's taken by the kicking team. It's just their first, so two remaining as they burn one here in this third quarter. Now the offense is not leaving the field. They're going to stay out and go for it on fourth and three. They're going to run. This is Stewart. So certainly an interesting call there to go for it and to take the field. And the interception last time on the opponent's side of the field, certainly not what they want. Put it mildly. That is so frustrating because that signifies there's a drive going on. You're in a good spot. Great place to run some of your best offense. Instead, they turn the ball over. Yeah, turn the ball over last time. See if they can avoid doing it here. Manning the throw on second down. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. Larry Donnell, the one he was trying to get it to, and it's third down. Normally, he's pretty reliable. Usually catches what's thrown to him. On that play, he simply dropped it. He'll buy some time right. Now he's going to throw deep right side. He was looking for Odell Beckham that time. And that'll bring up a fourth down. After all the preparation, all the practice, a play like that will actually break your heart. They had everything they wanted, just unable to complete it. In the end zone, a big time drop. And I don't think this has the carry. It does not. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. So it's an empty possession, and as a kicker, not the way you want to start your day's work. And now each team's missed a field goal here so far, Brandon, so apparently neither guy is immune. They'll let their receiver run it out of the Wildcat. And he'll push this forward only to about the 42-yard line. Two yards on the carry there, it'll be second down. And now it looks like they're going to be in the hurry up. Partner, you know I love to point out when teams break tendency and do something a little bit different from the norm. But when you run the ball in the first play of the drive, that's not a tendency breaker at all. That's just trying to establish yourself as you move forward. Anytime you decide to use your quarterback as a runner, most of the time when you design a play, you're expected to break a little bit bigger than this one because when you run them on short gains, your risk-reward and him taking hits, I'm not sure that's the payoff they were looking for. Now it's Newton. Gets it to Benjamin. It's caught. A gain of 11 and a first down. That's a pretty good throw on the curl route there. Third down, and they pick up a first. Defense should be aware for that, right? They should be aware, but it was so hard sometimes. Yeah, it's not easy. Because when they, when they sell that. And he's got it. Touchdown, Panthers. 10 again. 44 yards. And the Panthers are now an extra point away from tying up this game. And we've got a good one brewing. We're all knotted up at 14. Nothing separating these two teams on the scoreboard as the kick fielded in the end zone. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. And the Giants ready to come out now. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. It goes as a gain of eight and moves the chains. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Looking to speed things up here, going with some tempo. They go play action for Jennings. Now Manning. He's going to launch this thing. He's got it at the 15. Manning to back him. A big play there. 47 yards. A great job pulling that one in from a guy, as we know, who can really blaze. He's got a lot of speed. And that speed can work for him so many different ways. Sometimes he just takes off and goes and just runs past people. Sometimes you get people to back off so far that you can catch everything underneath. But still, at some point in the game, you probably have to make some contested catches, right? Sometimes you have to go up and beat a defender for the football. 
He has that in his arsenal as well. Showed it right there. They're going to hurry back to the line now. Throwing his Manning on third down. Eluding the pressure right. And Jennings has it. And he's able to pick up the first in Charlotte. All square, 14 apiece to score as we get ready for the fourth quarter. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. And now a carry here for Orleans Darkwall. And he is in. Touchdown, New York. Orleans Darkwall, a three-yard touchdown run. And the Giants have broken our tie as they take the lead. It's up and good, and that'll make the score 21-14. Brown now to kick it away after the touchdown. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he'll wind up about four yards shy of where he would have been if he had taken a knee as they'll start at the 21-yard line. Here come the Panthers now, set to take over on offense. And they're hoping to capture some of that magic they had last time out when they were able to put together a scoring drive. But they're still down here, Charles. Not the major concern, though, because of what you talked about. They scored the last time out. They feel good about themselves. They feel like their game plan is now in effect. They know how to attack and what plays they want to put together. But they've got to keep them moving in the right direction because, as you did note, they are down on the scoreboard. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. We talk about mobility on quarterbacks all the time. Here's where it really pays off. Able to move, evade, and is accurate throwing on the run and picking up a first down. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. And he's brought down after a good game. Looked like the defense put pretty good pressure on him, but he's able to flush out to his right to try and evade people. On the run, had to get on his horse. Still accurately throws a nice pass for a first down. And look at this. Cam Newton intercepted a third time. A great read, and it's picked off. And New York set to take the field. And they were able to punch it in the end zone last time. They'll be looking to do that again here for the defense. Obviously, they'll be looking to stop them from punching it back in the end zone. It always is punch counter punch, isn't it? And which team has the advantage? Well, let's just go back. Last time on offense, they rolled downfield, got into a good rhythm. You can see a little more bounce in and out of the huddle. You can see the sideline really get into the game. So defensively, you're thinking to yourself, how do we take that away from them? How do we get the advantage back? Let's see what they come up with. I think pressure is always the first way to go. <laughs> you love pressure. We'll see, I love we'll it. Let's see if they dial it up this drive. That was a good play, an incompletion that feels like a disappointment. The ball was tipped in the air, a chance for an interception, and you just, this is the big play we've been looking for. And he is not going to get away. The rush was too strong, and this is going to wind up a safety. And how about the big boy, the D tackle there, feasting on the O-line, getting his squad two points. The glory guys are the defensive ends and the outside linebackers. They create the pressure from the edge, but those big fellas inside that can collapse a pocket, sometimes they get rewarded too. Extra round at the post-game buffet. <laughs> They'll start the drive with a run by Stewart. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. And a nice carry there of 15 yards. And the offense moving quickly to the line. They go back to Stewart on first. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Tough day. Tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. And it's hauled in by Ed Dixon. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. Give him nine on the play, and they'll be faced with a third and inches. And they're going to speed things up here. They'll try and run it. Here's Stewart. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. Officially a gain of just a yard there, but they do convert on third and inches. Shift together here from the D-line. Now a play fake here on first down. And Dixon over the middle. A pick up there of 36. And the Panthers are set up now with a first and goal. 
And now a first down following that long game. Well, even after all those interceptions, he's not deterred, still confident to go deep at work there. I think all the old rules about playing that position still apply. If things go wrong, you still act like you're the best player out on the field. You still carry that supreme arrogance with you and continue to fire the ball. I've seen guys have games like this, and this is where you find out if you're great or not. Can you overcome some interceptions and still lead your team to victory? Well, he challenged the play. It did not pay off. And that means he lost a timeout in that challenge. And as a coach, you hate that. Don't know if you took the advice of the player. You threw it yourself, but it didn't go your way. At the end of the day, it all comes back to the head coach. He has the final determination on whether to actually challenge the player or not. And this is so heartbreaking. You throw that flag, you probably feel really confident, and then all of a sudden, boom, you lose the challenge. Yeah, when you take a look at it, you're throwing that flag because you believe you're going to be right. And when it comes back the other way, you have to regroup. Now Newton on third and goal. And he can't get away from the pressure the Giants get there. Olivier Vernon in there to get him his second sack now of the afternoon. Likely the play of the game here, trailing in the final quarter and going for Likely the play of the game here, trailing in the final quarter and going for it on fourth and goal. Desperation time, Newton, fourth down. Shakes off the sack. And he is gonna lose yardage here. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. Now the Giants are gonna get the football back. The New York set to take the field. They have the lead, still a one possession game, but the defense got the stop. They've got the football now, just salted away, right? Exactly, that's all the defense is counting on from their offense. They did their job in a big way. You know they're over on the sidelines now, starting to take their tape off and, hey, we've done this thing. The offense has to put it away and that means ball security. Absolutely. Stranger things have happened. Here's Darquan. They find some open field here. And now off to the races down the right side. And he's across for the touchdown. And in the final minute, that should just about seal it. And that touchdown should make you feel comfortable but do you really feel like it's totally over yet? Not totally, but I think you're pretty much there. Yeah, you've still got to make sure you stay with it, do all the right things down the stretch, especially on defense, but that touchdown there, you've got to feel good about your chances. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And the decision to come out is going to cost him five yards with a new rule as he's taken down right at the 20-yard line. Carolina getting set to take the field. And last time this unit was out here, costly turnover, and then that turned into six points. They've got to make amends. And how many times have we sat in meetings with coaches and they use the term complimentary football? <laughs> offense take care of the defense, defense take care of the offense. That didn't happen on the last possession. This is a chance for them to pick themselves back up and help their team. Yeah, we'll see if they can recoup and recover. Stewart is the lone setback. Newton now to throw. And this one is incomplete. It looked like they had something there, but I think that he was thinking about running with the football before he actually hauled it in, and that led to a big drop. Throwing on third down, Newton. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Picked off by the longtime Bengal, Leon Hall. And New York set to take the field. And yeah, they'll just sip a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. They'll run again now with Darquan. And he'll do a nice job here just to fight his way back to the line of scrimmage. And 
and no press coverage here. They are backing off in the secondary. He's got time. He finds Beckham complete. And he gets the first down here as he's taken down at the 24. Now Darquan. And he'll be taken down near the 20 at the 21. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. That'll leave him with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. On the run, Darquan. And he's going to be hemmed in and brought down right at the line of scrimmage. Star Latulale in on the tackle. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. From the gun on third down, Manning. And this will be caught. Well, forget taking the knee. Some late gamesmanship here as they throw for a late touchdown. They went empty backfield, all their weapons out wide, so there, were, there really was no secret here to what they were going to do. No secret, but they still had to execute it, and they still had to protect the guy throwing the ball because oftentimes when you empty the backfield, 